Here's a quick demonstration of NX Sheet Metal. I'm going to show you how to create this very simple bracket in NX. I've seen this demonstration from another CAD system and it seemed a little complicated in the process. So I'm going to show you how we would do this in NX. So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to create a new part file. I'm using my sheet metal template and I'm working in inches. Once I've created my template here, I'm ready to go. I'm going to set up in my part properties the global parameters for my part. My material thickness is going to be 0.25 and my bend radius and relief sizes are all going to be constant at 0.25 and I'm going to use the default 0.33 uh, for the neutral factor. And the first thing you'll notice is this part is symmetrical so there's only any real value in creating half of it. So we're going to start with a tab the thickness is picked up from the properties and I'm going to generate half of this which has a, a length of 4 and as we're doing half 3.5 is 1.75 I'm just going to center this sketch on the origin just by picking the two edges in the center line and hitting the S key and my top face or half of my top face has been created. We now generate a flange. I'm going to use a full flange. Its length is going to be 4.5. That dimension isn't actually on the, the diagram there, but I've equated that back. And we're using our length reference to be outside. So I pick the edge which infers the direction downwards because I picked the bottom edge and the dimension 4.5 is taken from the top face, i.e. the outside of the bend, length, length reference is outside, and I'm going to do a material inside because the overall width of 3.5 is to the outside of the material. Now this side has a little bit more material on here, and the way to generate that is to sketch on additional material, and here I'm just going to use the secondary tab. I'm going to pick up on this edge and generate my sizes of 7.5 and 1 inch from the top. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the fillets. I can do these later or I can do these now. I'm going to put a 0.75 fillet on top and bottom and I'm going to also add the hole that's there which is 0.75 and OK that and we've generated that uh, that side flange. Now we're going to generate the, the flange at the bottom here. I can use a contour flange and sketch both at the same time but I honestly think it's much easier to generate this flange using two individual features. And in this case, what we're going to do is a from end. So I'm going to pick this edge and I'm going to specify the point here to pick from end and the distance from end because it's one and I've already got a 0.75 fillet there is 0.25. My width is 2.5 and my length is 2.5. It's basically a square flange. But here my inset needs to be bend outside. So it's actually outside of the material. I could have created it inside and used the reliefs to cut material away. I think that's a unnecessary operation. So we're going to do it this way. Notice my release is set to none. If I had square or round, you'll see that that's taken out of the material if required. I apply that. I go back to a full flange and generate this one here and this length is 0.75 again from outside and we're going to go back to material inside here such that we've got our 2.5 width <coughs> that's, uh, that's on the diagram there. So nearly finished on this side I'm just going to put in this uh, slot and here I'm going to use normal cutout. I could use extrude but normal cutout is uh, favorable when using sheet metal in case it's not perpendicular. 
and it will generate perpendicular edges if required. So I'm going to include this hole as my reference and generate a circle on this center line. Again, this needs to be 0.75 and another one also 0.75 and this top one needs to align with this hole. I use my make horizontal constraint and this one is dimension 1.5 and now we construct the arcs. I pick up on the two curves here. I make one tangent and then pick the two edges and make the other end tangent and then repeat for the other curve. Pick up on two edges, make one tangent, make the other tangent. Let's put some dimensions on. 1.5 and 0.75. And then we just hit T for trim and take away the extra material and we finish. I've sketched this on the center line. I just need to change the direction and it goes through all the parts here and I'm pretty well much finished there. Now I can either mirror this to make the symmetry and then add on the, the additional features, but let's just do those now. I'm going to break this corner down here as a chamfer of 1.5 and pick this edge here. I don't need to go in and pick there. I can just window select for convenience. Apply that. I'm going to add a 0.5 blend to those two edges I've just created plus this one here and apply that and then a 0.25 blend which covers this one and this one. I now mirror the body about my center line and I unite the two together. And there's my part finished with just the holes left to go. So for these I'm going to use the hole command, pick up on the datum plane such that I can go into sketch mode and I can then generate sketch points for all of my holes in a single operation. Dimension them up. This is one inch from the end. This is two inches between them. This one and this one are aligned, uh, sorry, in the center line are symmetric about. They are also 5.5 apart and 1.25 from the edge. I finish my sketch. The size is 0.75 through body and my part is now complete.